the last video we saw how to create a simple frame but practically we don't follow that method let us follow a proper approach and create a frame class and uh, display and see how that goes uh, let us create a new class and let us call it as hello frame since it is a subclass of java.awt.frame class we will use a constructor to initialize some details about the same for example a title as hello frame a boundary probably with 50 50 and let us say 400 and 200 set background of color dot let us say gray should be okay and maybe some more later let us create a class to run the same this time we'll call it as hello main finish add a main function and I'll say hello frame h equals new hello frame and this is when the object get constructed initialized to the default settings we have done but it won't be visible unless you say h dot set visible of true and now that we have done let us click the run button to see if that is okay as a Java application and as you can see we have a frame and clicking on this won't close we saw this in the previous case let's stop this add few components for example I want to add a label LBL for example message a text field to accept the name of the user so we'll say text name and let us say a button to give a message so btn ok btn close and let us initialize all these here lbl message equals new label of enter your name and tf name equals new text field of 20 some unit not exactly the number of characters btn ok equals new button of ok or maybe I say say hello btn close equals new button of close let's add all these add lbl message add df name add btn ok add btn close now the add function takes each component and adds it to the frame the only question is where exactly does it add let's have a look at that how this comes and why run the same as you can see that no other component except the last one that we have added um, is seen here and does it mean they are not added not exactly they are all added but they are not they are all overlapping on the same the reason being each component that you have added has a location and the size now the size will be by default the size of the container and the location by default happens to be zero zero and since uh, all of them share the same uh, boundary uh, information so the last one appears on the uh, on the top uh, let us set it out by specifying what we call as a layout manager uh, we say here uh, now the simplest is uh, flow layout uh, fl equals new flow layout uh, and I simply have to say that now this object is used to by the frame to manage the layout so we simply say set layout of fl and 
and that will take care of the same so let's see how this comes on the output now now you see that they're all flowing one behind the other and as I increase the size you can see that they're flowing and as I decrease the size as you can see they just are flowing one behind the other uh, no good let us follow another approach and this time instead of flow layout let us create what we call as grid layout gl equals new grid layout of two rows and a column what it means to say is a company uh, a combination of two cells vertically oriented uh, so that means that in two uh, in the first cell i would like to add this the second cell i would like to add this and once again each cell can only contain one component so obviously you if i add both of them to the first cell which in this case i may not be uh, the each one of them will be overlapping on uh, other technically but uh, what we can do is we create a comp uh, a container called panel which can contain other components just like the frame the only difference between frame and uh, panel is panels don't have boundaries they don't have their own window uh, so they become part of the f uh, part of the frame so it's a panel p1 p2 p1 equals new panel p2 equals new panel and i say p1 dot add the first component lbl message p1 dot add tf name the second component p2 dot add btn ok uh, btn ok and p2 dot add btn close and all i have to do is to set the layout of the current frame uh, to be managed by gl which is an object of grid layout and now that we have set the layout we will also say that p1 must be added to the first cell so we say add p1 and this makes sure that p1 is added to the first cell and add p2 and as you can see when i run the program you should see two cells containing or rather you can say two rows this is where the first row ends and the second row begins here and no matter you increase the width the orientation won't change and uh, also you can observe by default the panels that we have added uh, have a flow layout and just to show you that there are two panels let us change the color of one of the panel and uh, let's go here and say p1 dot set background of color dot let's take for example c y a n sign and save it let's run and as you can see that the first panel is colored this and second panel and th that only means that there are two panels now in the next video we will see how to work with events so that we can click on the buttons or we can click on these control buttons and get something done